and welcome again to my channel Paul Lee Music. We're going to talk today more about the ES920, namely the virtual technician. Now when you buy this particular piano it sounds great out of the box, there's no doubting that. You can just plug it in and play away. But some of you like to have a little bit of a fiddle, a little bit of a noodle with some of the aspects of the core piano sounds. And remember, on the other videos, there are four core piano sounds with which can be adjusted with the virtual technician. Now, let's just think about certain aspects of an acoustic, i.e. a real piano. What sort of things affects the actual particular sound of it? Well, we've got things like, obviously, when we push the pedal down, we are not just producing a sustain of one note, we're producing the sustain of lots of notes. It's one note predominantly, but we have what we call string resonance. And that means that due to the maths and the way that we have what's called a resonant frequency, that different strings will vibrate in sympathy to one or more of our particular notes. So you can imagine as we play lots of notes, we get an awful lot happening with the strings on the piano. Um, the other thing that we've got on there are some of the undamped resonance. Now, basically what that means is that at the top of any acoustic piano, which is resurrected here very, very well on the Kawai, when we get to the top of the piano, as you can hear, there is no pedal on there but some of the notes will stay on. That's called the undamped resonance. Now, what that means is that when we play some of the notes down, the uh, lower on the piano, that some of the notes will vibrate in sympathy to that. You can't hear it too well here, but as we look at that aspect, you should hear a difference on there. Um, what else have we got? We've got also the fullback noise. That's the nose where it notes the sound, should I say, when I push a key down and let go of the key, we get a bit of a clonk as all the wood of the levers of the hammer and the key, etc., sits back down as we let go. And we get a bit of a wood clonk. Now we can adjust that. Um, what other things um, affect the aspect of the piano? Well, also um, how open we've got the lid. Now we don't tend to open the lid, particularly on an upright piano, but on a grand piano, it's a very important thing depending on what effect we want. Um, for example, on um, a, a pop recording, you might have the lid closed. If we're on a live situation on a stage, quite often it's closed in pop music where mics are put inside the actual uh, piano itself. Whereas if you're playing a lovely large concert grand, you would have the lid almost fully open, if not fully open, so that the sound can resonate um, when we're playing along with an orchestra. But all those aspects and more can be adjusted on the Kawai. So let's get down and have a look in detail. So here we are, nice and close to the Kawai ES920. So how do we get to the virtual technician? Dead easy, push the menu button and push it again and it says virtual tech. Now, if we then press the value button one more time, then we get to the first page. So you've got several pages of parameters that we can actually adjust. So the first one we've got there is the touch curve. Now, what that means is, is how it actually feels. When you push the keys down, we can change how the keys actually respond to our touch. So normal is the setting that Kawhi thinks um, is the average of all the different settings we can have. If we actually move forward, we've got light one, light two, light three. That simply means that maybe if a piano was being played, if the piano was being played by a young child, that you might want to put it a bit lighter so they don't have to have as much force to actually push the keys down. They will respond quicker. Don't forget, it doesn't change the feel of the actual weights because that's a mechanical aspect. This is purely um, a software aspect, but it does make a difference. So we've got several of those. We can even turn it off. What that means is then that there's no touch response at all. However hard or soft I actually hit the key, it doesn't change it. Um, so light there. Um, that one actually is, uh, is fairly normal, but if we put it probably on the higher one. That, that takes very little 
sort of touch. But again, there are pianos I've played, shall we say, to use the term, knackered pianos in pubs and clubs and restaurants that do take very little touch to actually make them work because they're that worn out, the action's gone and they probably weren't terribly good pianos in the first place. So that's your touch curve. And by the way, oh yes, you can take it back the other way. So that's a very heavy piano, that's a real. And that really does need a big bash to actually get the sound uh, playing loud on there. Um, I must admit when I'm setting it up I either have it on normal or just a touch of the heavy but it's a personal preference. So that's the touch curve. If we then push the menu button up next we've got voicing. What is voicing? Nothing to do with voices. What voicing is is when a piano is brand new, not a lot of people know this, when you buy an acoustic piano you don't actually um, have to have it sounding quite the way it does in the shop. You can have your part of the tuning of a piano is where the actual piano technician, when we say piano technician um, in this way, we mean a human being coming around to tune your acoustic piano. They can voice the piano. What they do, they actually do different things to each individual hammer to change it to either a sharper sound or a mellower sound. Um, and that can be done different ways. They can use various tools. I think they can even put needles into the actual um, hammers themselves to actually make them softer. So they actually don't leave the needles in, of course, but they actually uh, push them in a set of needles and can actually, um, or it's like a wire brushy sort of thing. I forget quite what it is. And that can make it softer if it's a very hard tone. Of course, that, that aspect of, of uh, voicing does settle down over the years. They can change either for the better or the worse. But uh, you can change the voicing rather like a pipe organ. You voice a pipe organ into the actual acoustic environment of the building it's in. The same with this. So what have we got for those? We've got mellow. We've, uh, there's two of those, dynamic, bright one, bright two, and you can even have your own aspects as well that you can play by um, actually adjusting certain parameters, which we've not got time to go into today. So um, if we play some notes there, let's try it on mellow one. Is there a big difference? Yeah, slightly mellower. That's your sort of effect of putting those pins in the hammers, as we said earlier. Let's uh, take it to the mellow two. Um, then we've got dynamic. I have used this before. I mean, I don't tend to change the voicing very much, um, but the dynamic, there was one particular, um, of one of the samples that I preferred it with this on. So, um, so that might be quite good for sort of bashing out stuff a little bit more, you know, but what I'd say is don't necessarily think about um, this aspect of the piano as um, a real sort of piano tuner would do. Just think of it as, well, I'll set up the piano with all the other parameters. Try that. Try different ones until it feels right. And the same goes for the touch curve as well. Don't just think, oh, heavy, light, whatever. Listen to it. Play it. Get the feel of it. Don't necessarily follow, oh, well, I better not use that because I don't want a light touch. Try it. Experiment. You'd be surprised. I've been surprised at changing some of those that I thought would have a different effect on the sound than I thought. And I thought, oh, I wouldn't like that. I've changed it and it actually sounds better. Um, so, but it is variable. What have we got next? We've got the damper resonance. Now, this is a, a very important effect that I remember when first digital pianos came out, they didn't used to have this. Um, this is the effect of those strings we talked about. When we push the damper pedal down there, when we push that, um, it is the effect of the strings resonating. So on a um, real piano, an acoustic piano, when, for example, if I pushed the C note down, if I pushed the damper pedal down now, and if I push the C down, we get the C, of course, predominantly sounding, but also we get a lot of other strings vibrating in sympathetic resonance. So we're not just getting one sound, we're getting a lot more sounds as well, but not at the forefront of the actual sound that we're making just in the background as almost a reverberation in a manner of speaking. Now, when, um, digital pianos first came out, they didn't used to have that on there. Um, that was, so we can actually switch that off. So if I switch off, that's very much how they used to be done and still cheaper pianos in a lot of the ranges by, um, Probably Kawhi, I don't know, but certainly uh, the cheaper range in the um, uh, Yamaha pianos and the Roland sometimes won't have that um, effect on there, or it might be done in a different way. But um, if I put the pedal down, 
and just play um, a few notes in an arpeggio with the pedal down. So I've got the damper pedal down. This is switched off. There's no effect of the strings vibrating at all. It is just each note I push. <laughs> To actually give that um, a sort of, well, make it obvious, the change, if I put that up to 10, it's a maximum of 10, by the way, on there. If I now do the same thing, damper pedal down and play an arpeggio. Do that again. So not only are we getting the sustain of the note naturally, we are also getting all those other virtual strings uh, vibrating, which gives a more expansive, larger sound, and of course is more akin to a real piano. So a default, by the way, if you only get the actual default which is what Kawhi suggests. If you push both of the value keys, it comes up with a default. The default level is five, it's midway roughly, isn't it? I tend to put, I like all the noises and crunches on the piano. I tend to put it about eight, depending on the piano I've got and what effect, but generally speaking. So that's the damper resonance. We'll put it back at five at the moment anyway. Um, so that's that one there. Again, fiddle with that one to how much you want on there. A lot of these effects um, are done on the Kawai, I believe, with physical modeling, which is very, very clever. Not only does the uh, core piano actually have sampling in it, but it also has what we call physical mod modeling. That's been around for, well, uh, physical modeling has been around since uh, I remember it coming out about 1997, invented by Yamaha, one of their synths called the VL1. Um, but it's now been used by ver uh, lots of companies, including Roland and Yamaha's models uh, use some of this as well, where certain aspects of an acoustic piano are actually created via a computer model. They're not a recording, so that probably isn't um, a recording of a real damper resonance from a real piano, which has been done before on certain uh, companies' makes and models. Um, it is done virtually, I do believe. So, but it's very, very effective piano and an important sound to you, so do fiddle around with that one. The next one there um, is the damper noise. Well, that's purely um, the sound of the pedal, the damper pedal down there and when I push it obviously if we can imagine the dampers those little fingers touching that have contact with each string when we actually push the damper pedal and they move away from the strings so they're going like that so as I push the damp damper pedal let go it's there damper pedal off they come back so what that's doing as they move away from the strings, we get a slight stroking of the string because of the angle of the dampers, the way they actually hit the strings. And so we get a slight stroking. So you need to listen to this carefully. I'm going to push the pedal down. You'll hear a slight. So what that's doing, it's stroking virtually all the strings of our virtual piano. So let's just have a listen to that. I mean, I can hear that even with the speakers here. But if I then put it on full, you'll hear a lot. It's You can just hear, let's hear that again. You know, so it's whether you want that, you know, that's, uh, but I, I always have a little bit of that on. I've got that usually about five on my piano. Um, string resonance. Now this is, um, on again, it's a little bit related to the damper resonance. It's a similar thing to that. Um, so um, what, what, what basically that does is, and we'll just demonstrate, if I switch it off for a moment, if I just hold down a few notes there, I'm going to hold them down though, so that they don't make any sound. So I'm pushing them down so they've not struck the hammers as on a real piano. Now, if I play some notes up here, You can hear a little bit of uh, sort of reverberation of the uh, strings at the top there that we'll talk about in a moment, but you're just hearing those notes there. Now, if I turn this up full, let's hear the difference. Can you hear? What that's doing is those notes there are vibrating in sympathy with those notes up there. So even though they're not playing, and as you can see, I'm pushing the notes down, but not playing anything, 
So, I mean, I suppose, that, you know, if we again were to sort of... Again, it makes a more expansive sound then. So if we turn that off, let's just hear the difference there. We're getting mostly the, the actual damper resonance in there, of course, but um, that, so that gives another effect, which is more akin to a real piano as well. So remember, it's the effect when, you have the, uh, when you're holding down notes that aren't necessarily playing, it's when we actually push other notes and it's making those resonate in sympathy to those. That's how it works. Again, that defaults at five. So again, another interesting one to try about. Don't get worried about how little or how much you have any of any of these set to. Just do it so it sounds right, you know. And if you go wrong, it doesn't matter. You don't have to save it. You can switch a piano off and on again, um, sort of thing, you know. <laughs> and it will, it, you know, you can never cock it up really, basically. Um, right, so then for the next one there, uh, we've got the undamped string resonance. That is the resonance of the strings at the top there. We talked about this earlier in the introduction, that when you get to the top of the piano, there are certain notes that don't have those little fingers. Remember the dampers touching the strings? They don't have them on there. So at the top there, um, if we... Can you hear these ones here? They don't have any dampers on there. So what happens is, because all, as we found on there with all the string resonance and the damper resonance, um, that we get strings vibrating in sympathy to other notes that we're playing, that what happens is when I push um, a note, when in fact if I turn it off, if I just push a chord here, uh, around there, that's off. Now if I put this on, now those virtual strings at the top there are going to vibrate in sympathy to that. Can you hear that metallic ring? I like that because that makes the piano sound a lot more live. Do that again so you can hear it clearly. I'll turn it off again. Just one more time. It's a sort of ringy, high-pitched reverb effect, really. But again, I, I must admit, I usually have that on to about six or seven because I like a bit of that. It, because you do get a lot of that on an acoustic piano. Don't be frightened if you want to have it up at ten. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> so that's that one there. We'll pop that back to its default again. Cabinet resonance. Well, of course, you know, you've got your strings, you've got your hammers, your levers, etc., 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 in a wooden cabinet. This is the resonance, how the sounds all sort of knock around inside the cabinet, and that is emulating that. Now, you can have that taken completely off. Let's just hear again the effect. What you generally, what I find with this, because I also play Hammond organ, and uh, when we use um, Hammond organ virtual Leslie speakers, that's a speaker that the Hammond organ goes through, um, you also get cabinet resonance. You can switch on or off for that. Generally, what, what it sounds like is a woody, well, excuse, you know, excuse the pun, but a woody sort of effect um, where, uh, you get sometimes a little bit of a um, um, sort of, what do you call it there, sort of a mid to lower frequency vibration in the background there. Um, and it does give, again, it adds to that sort of robustness. I think it's the robustness of the sound. Let's just hear what we mean by that. If I just play a few notes with that switched off. <laughs> Let's put it on full again, because that's always a good way to test it, I think. Go from off to full. It's a subtle effect. Let's take that off again. Let's just hear some individual notes this time with it off. Let's now put that on full. Here we go. There you are. Can you hear that? It's almost like it's more in the room with me. I like a bit of that on, you know, don't put too much because it makes the sound muddy. So it defaults at one, you might have it two, three, maybe up to five, but don't get too much further because what's happening, you can get quite a slightly more muffledy, muddy sound on there. So we'll leave that um, there. Again, uh, you know, I always, I, I must admit, I tend to have most of these controls doing something because I like all the knocks and rattles, you know, it makes it more realistic. 
Let's look at the next one. Key off effect. Well, when we push a note down and let go of it, we've actually got that little damper again. This time, not worked by the pedal, remember, but by just me pushing a note down. Um, what happens is that when we push the note down and let go, the damper rests back onto the string. So the key off effect is really when we let go, it's the sound of the damper returning to stop the string from sounding. You might need headphones for this, but it, uh, because it is, uh, you know, a one that's a very subtle effect. But if I sort of play, let's just play some notes with it off. So no key effect. Let's do that again. Let's put it on full like before so we can hear the effect. And you can just hear it. it's very subtle. You can hear it more on certain notes than others. So that defaults at five. Again, if you don't want to touch those and you think, well, I can't hear much difference, just leave it on the default. That's what I would suggest on there. So that's the key off effect. Full back noise. Well, as we explained earlier, um, when you play an acoustic piano, a real piano, when you let go of the notes, obviously all those levers and fulcrums and so on, I've got to fall back into place ready for when you play that note again. So the full back noise is all the mechanics falling back into place there, the woody sound. This, I think, also is an aspect which is physically modelled again on the quiet and a very good job of it they've done, I feel. Um, again, let's just hear that. Um, by the way, there were people talking about the noise of the action on these pianos, saying, they, oh, they're a noisy action. All I can say is there must be some faulty units because... I've been using digital pianos for 35 years and I've had every make and model of uh, most of the major companies and I've not noticed any aspect of this that is overly noisy with the action. I really cannot hear anything. I mean, you know, it really, to me, is your normal sound. At the end of the day, you've got levers, complex mechanisms under here derived from uh, Kwai's wonderful action that they make you're going to get a bit of noise. There are real mechanics there, but no more than on a real piano, probably in fact a lot less, certainly on the pianos I've played. So um, the mechanical noise on there, maybe there were some faulty units out there, I don't know, but I have not noticed anything erroneous about the sound of the mechanics of the action of this. Not the electronic side, but the mechanics. So um, your experience may differ, of course, on that. Anyway, back to the full back noise. It might be that some people had turned this up really loud and thought it was the piano action that was making the noise, not this. Um, so let's just hear. So this is the sound of the action dropping back in place. Let's just... Uh... So that's off. Again, let's put it full on. Oh, there we go. That's that's quite creepy, really. I always find that quite creepy because it does really does sound like the, the piano's in the room when you put that on. Can you hear that up there? Let's turn it off again. Just do those same notes. And now fully on again. And very, very good, very realistic. And of course, if you have a, a, an upright piano um, where you're closer to the hammers, then you will hear that more. I know pupils now I'm teaching online that when I'm teaching them, I could hear very much, even over the internet, the fallback of their acoustic pianos, their upright acoustic pianos. Um, I, like, I, I usually have that about up to eight. Um, I like that on the upright piano sample that's on here because, again, it gives that real realistic sound. So, you know, I have that about eight. It does default at five, but, you know, I like, I, again, I like me noises, you know. <laughs> So there you go. Um, hammer noise. Well, I think that's pretty obvious. It's the noise of the hammers. Again, let's just turn that right back to zero. OK, by the way, some of that noise you can hear there. In fact, actually, I should take that fallback noise off. There we are. Let's take it off. Let's now put that fully on again. 
very noticeable. If you had a piano like that in real life, it's probably got some major problems. You'd need to get a piano technician in to repair it. <laughs> there you go. You know, um, it defaults at five again, so if we probably take the full back at five, that's the default sound. You know, you might like a bit more, but I, I don't think we need too much of that, actually. I would keep that at the default level, or maybe even less, you know, because we don't really need that. Hammer delay, bit of a weird one. Um, when you push the key down, there's a bit of delay before you get the sound. A bit creepy, you probably won't notice that on here, but um, uh, what does it default to? It defaults to off, probably a good idea, actually. I can't personally, unless you're trying to recreate a particular piano you remember playing and you, or, you know that I can't remember really, I, I can't really think you'd want to ever use this. I mean, if we put that on there, it means that it feels quite weird, almost like you, your hands are disconnected from your brain, you know, it's a bit, but it's, you know, it's an effect that all adds up, I suppose. It's probably cumulative when you use it with all the other aspects on there. It's probably cumulative. That will affect the way you feel about the other sounds, you know, and so on. So, you know, it's another one to fiddle with. I probably, I don't touch that, I must admit. Um, but it's something that certainly is something sometimes you might think, oh yeah, I'll put that on. If it helps anyway, it's all about experimentation, you know. If you don't want to experiment, just leave it at the default level. Don't forget, push those two arrows, goes onto there. Um, then we've got the top board. That's how much the lid of the piano is open. You know, you've got your, um, imagine your grand piano there, you know, it's closed like if you've got a pop piano, as we said earlier, and then it might be fully open if you're doing a classical concert. Uh, and that affects it obviously tonally. Now we've got here several options. We've got closed one, um, closed two, open three, open two, open one. So um, I think the closed one will be fully closed. That's um, that would be more like your pop sort of piano where it's close mic'd, where they put microphones in, in uh, you know, sort of Elton John and all that sort of when he's doing uh, live concerts, etc. Um, cl um, close two. That one there actually will be where there's um, two lids on a, a grand piano. You've got your main big lid, but you've also got another one which, which closes onto the sort of latter quarter of the piano. Uh, that can be folded back. That's quite often what people would have open on a piano if they don't have the other lid. And that's probably, I would imagine, what that's emulating. In fact, actually, no, I'd say the other way around. That one actually is fully closed. to that other one there uh, that's where we've got that first part portion of the grand piano lid open you can see it's more trebly so uh, that's that one and then you've got three levels of open really so we've got open one which is you know slightly open <laughs> See, we get sort of bigger sounding as we go along and of course don't forget that will be affected as well by how much of the string resonances um, and etc etc and then we've got open to and finally open three fully open. So you can hear a massive difference from that closed two. Let's just put that onto that uh, open three. bigger sound on there. There we go. Um, we're coming to the end of it really. They're the main parameters to adjust. Um, 
decay time. That's actually how long it takes for the note to die away when we hold it down. Um, so if we put that on to... Can you hear there that that's dying away very quick? Um, when it's on 10, it takes a lot longer. Um, again, that's another aspect. I don't tend to touch that, but that might be, a, again, a particular character of a piano um, that you want to actually emulate where, again, it could be either one that's not work, that's sort of a bit aged, but it had a character to it. Um, or it might be, uh, you know, where you feel that when you've played uh, acoustic pianos, that the decay time tends to be longer. So that's the dying of the note as we hold it down. Coupled with that, is the release time. Release is a synthesis term, which actually you could think of more as sustain. How long the note stays on when we let go. We call it release because it's how long really it stays on when we release the note. But thinking of it, think of it of the sustain of the note. So when I play a note normally, let's just take that off again to one. That's the uh, lowest level. Now that's unnatural because it's, I mean, That's a very, very uh, short one. That's quite unrealistic. Let's take it to its default of five. Now, if I then um, go right up to the release time of 10, let's listen to that. So that's where um, the hammers there are, or the dampers rather, are actually not releasing, uh, not going back to the string quick enough. Um, so that might be a piano that's a little bit older, you know, um, so you might... Uh, want to em emulate that aspect. So you can hear, if I turn that up to five, that's normal. That's a normal grand upright piano that's in good condition. And if we take it to about seven, again, it, it, there's a lot of upright pianos I've played like that where they do that, but it's all about the character. If that works for you, use it. But I have to say, I would not really touch those um, controls, the decay and the release time. Um, there are a few others. We've got minimum touch, which is how much touch you can use to play softly on there. Uh, on a well-oiled grand piano, you can you can touch the note very softly and you'll get a very soft touch. Other ones, you have to push it a little bit harder there. Um, I don't tend to touch that very much. We've got a few other aspects as well. Um, those don't actually affect generally how we'd set up a piano. They do, I mean, we've got the tempo there, that's the tuning. We've got different tunings depending on the era of music you're playing. So if you like to play sort of um, Baroque music, you might have a different temperament that you'd use to actual normal equal tone. Equal temperament is the normal tuning of the piano, which means that everything's roughly in tune with one another. That's a, that's a, that is the standard for all pianos. But prior to that, there were different temperaments on pianos. Uh, weirdly, when, uh, like this one here, pure minor, we've got, uh, if I play from C to C on a normal temperament, if I then play from C to C on pure minor, listen to the difference. You can hear it sounds a little bit out of tune, doesn't it? So they're all that sort of relationship. So again, unless you're into that sort of thing, leave that well alone, basically. Uh, but again, it's up to you, you know. Um, the stretch tuning, um, that affects, again, the, the way that the piano is tuned in, in a real world. So, I'd, so really, the ones to touch, really, are the, obviously, touch curve, get the feel of the piano how you actually want it. There, that's as regard to how hard and uh, soft you hit the notes there. Um, we've got the voicing. Well, you might use that depending on what you want to do. Um, I tend to leave that as it is, but that's how sharp or mellow the actual virtual hammers are and how they react to our playing. Uh, damper resonance, uh, don't forget that that's to do with your pedal and how it affects the virtual strings all resonating. Um, and then we've got the damper noise there, which is the noise of the pedal as we push it. The right, this is the right hand pedal, don't forget the sustain or damper pedal, the uh, one to the right of the three pedals. Um, string resonance, you know, when you're holding notes down and how they interact. Um, undamped resonance there, um, that's, uh, that's also the uh, sounds of the strings at the top there vibrating. 
in sympathy, cabinet resonance, the noise of the cabinet, key off effect when we let go of the key, how much noise it makes um, as it uh, returns, and the fallback noise, that's the woody effect as the action returns and settles after a note's played, and hammer noise, and hammer delay, and then of course the top board, the tonality. So there's a lot of things to fiddle with on there. Um, you know, so enjoy that, you know, play around with that. So when you think about it, you can play all the different samples on the piano. You've got your four core samples and your variations thereof. Plus you've got all that as well. So you really can get this to sound as you want it to do. There are other things that we haven't touched on today. If we exit out of that and go to the basic settings there, we've actually also got EQ. So you can actually tonally change the overall bass, not to do with the actual um, hammer voicing, that we saw earlier, but you can just change the overall brightness and bass, you know, of the piano there. So you can have flat EQ. I must admit, I always tend to EQ my piano because I like it to sound a certain way. So I've actually, you can do your own. This is connected with the four EQ controls up there as well. Um, so depending on what EQ um, pattern you actually decide to use, whether it's a user one or one of those, that can affect um, how these affect the sound, what frequency they affect. But don't forget, by the way, talking about that, um, if I just go back to my default um, piano sound there, which I have stored there. That's my... That's my one where I've adjusted all those parameters we've talked about today to how I want it and including the EQ. But um, when we use the EQ, by simply moving a control, these are the higher frequencies and those are the, those are the lower frequencies basically. So we've got two for the higher. You'll hear it more up there really. And the same. I'll take those down. And then we've got the bass frequencies here. That's, you can see the bass there. Or lots more bass as well. So um, really, when you fiddle out with all those controls, you can also, you know, be pushing those sliders up and down. The default is in the middle there. And then you can, if you go backwards, that's less. And forwards is more. Okay, so that's another aspect as well. So there we have it. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that video and I hope that it informed you a little bit more about the virtual technician and what can be done with it, which I think is absolutely fantastic. There are many other aspects on the piano that we could cover. If you want to know about those, do let me know on the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe as well because there's going to be a lot happening on my channel. We're going to have videos, more videos of the piano, hopefully synthesizers, performance on organ, piano, keyboard, all the rest of it. Do subscribe. We're going to have some fun. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Bye for now.